I'm gonna spray paint this year and a half old RV before my wife gets home. Come along with me, let's have fun. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome to RV Field Trip. We're glad to have you. This is the second part. The first part is where I fiberglassed my RV. This part is where I'm going to be spray painting my year and a half old RV DIY style. I have never played with fiberglass. I have never painted anything professionally besides that Rust-Oleum stuff. But we're going to see this. All this is to save myself $2,800. I had got two quotes, one for $2,800 and one for $25. The person that offered it at $25, I didn't feel safe doing that. But my worst case scenario is I have to have it professionally done. My best case scenario, I save a tremendous amount of money. I'm doing all this for $200. That includes the fiberglass, the paint, and the the sealers, everything you needed. So I want to take you along. I'm going to show you what I'm doing and hopefully you learn something from this. Hopefully I learned something from this. <laughs> so without further, let's go at it. First, I want to show you guys the products that I'm using. Uh, I picked up all three of these at the auto paint store. Uh, on the left hand side is the clear coat. In the center is the primer that I used. And on the right hand side is the aerosol spray paint can that they made me. Um, I will show you later on in the video how I got them to match it so perfectly. I did contact the manufacturer to get the paint code, but apparently their paint code is not the same as everybody else's. So I did, I will show you how I got them to match it so perfectly. So without waiting any longer, let's watch me go to work spray painting this, this RV. Right here, you're going to see me cleaning it up. Um, I'm making sure there's no grease, no dust, nothing on there. I'm also going to be making sure that there's no uh, imperfections in it because this is going to be my last last chance before I do to put paint on there. Also, that whole work area, I did sandpaper it down with some 600 grit sandpaper. I wanted to make sure that the paint had something to adhere to. You'd want to spray onto a smooth surface. So again, I did sand that whole area down with some uh, 600 grit sandpaper lightly. And that way the paint does have something to adhere to. But again, here I'm just making sure that it's totally clean and there's no imperfections before I do paint. I, I do go a little bit overboard. I'm making sure it's clean. There's no imperfections, but again, this is my first time, guys. I've never done this before. I'm sure it's not the right way, but it did work out. Let's just put it that way. So I'm happy with the, the results of it. But <laughs> this is my OCD taking over. I'm just making sure everything is going to work out just fine. All right, I finally finished cleaning that off. Uh, right here, this is the primer. I'm just making sure that there's no bubbles, no nothing. And I'm mainly gonna spray the area that, the area that was damaged. Uh, this is the first coat, and I'm gonna put a couple more on there just to make sure it's nicely covered. And uh, now I'm gonna let it dry in between all coats. All right, after I let it dry for about 10 minutes, I'm going to put on the second coat here and let that dry. Again, I'm just looking to see if I can still see the uh, damaged areas. Now let's let this dry. All right, after I let this one dry for another 10 minutes, I went ahead and put uh, my third and final coat of the primer. I didn't, wasn't able to see any of the damaged area. So I was happy with that. Now let's let this dry for 10 minutes and go on from here. Now that I let it dry for an additional 10 minutes, uh, I was happy with the results. So it was time to sand it down. 
I am going to be using some 600 grit sandpaper to sand it down to make sure that again the paint and everything uh, first to make sure that the primer is nice and smooth but uh, I want it to be all smooth and again to make sure that the paint has something to adhere to so I'm just going to make sure I'm sanding it down I'm also going in different directions I didn't want to just go up and down side to side you'll see me go all different ways and I'm looking down to make sure I can't see any imperfections in it all right, after I finish doing that, again, I'm going to go back to cleaning it up, making sure that there's no dust anywhere because you don't want dust in your paint. Um, so, again, my OCD time, I am going to spray it down and make sure that we have no dust anywhere. Again, after I finish spraying it down with some alcohol, um, I let it all dry. I'm just going back with nice clean cloth, making sure that there's absolutely no dust, no nothing on there, and that way the paint will have something good to adhere to. So I'm taking my time and making sure that it's all dried and all looking good before I start painting. Alright, I made sure that my can was shook up real well. I mean, I, I shook that thing for a good two minutes. All different directions making sure it's all mixed up they even suggested that at the auto paint store um, so I'm just making sure it's nice and shook up let me save you a little bit of the boredom here right here um, I decided to put a little bit more tape on but if you look the way I'm folding it um, I'm not putting the hard tape just making a lip that way I don't have such a hard edge uh, so when you're spraying towards the paper it has something to go under it doesn't have a dead stop in it uh, I wish I would have done a little bit bigger of that but again like I said I was it, it just created more work by not making it even larger than that meaning more of paint able to go underneath but this did help out a tremendous amount uh, and I did I did see that in the University of YouTube but at the same token I just remembered it decided to go ahead and do it and I'm glad I did so I'm just gonna tape up all the way around uh, just the three corners the bottom side is where the rail goes so that's not uh, you're not going to see a hard edge there if you guys are finding any of this helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up it helps the algorithm out helps us out also if you like watching people do RV stuff uh, or just somebody that gets into a little bit of mischief every now and again I would have really appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button so please hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we'll have fun together and see what kind of mischief I can get myself into. All right, after I finish taping up, again, I'm shaking it up real well. Uh, I, I didn't show you all the shaking. <laughs> And I'm just going to make sure again it's not bubbling or before I start spraying. And I'm just going to do light little coats on it to make sure that we get them covered real well. And again, I do let it dry in between. And we're going to let that dry before we do another coat. All right, I let it dry for about 30 minutes. Now I'm doing another coat. Just taking my time, looking at the coverage. And again, that's the second coat. We're going to let that dry. All right, now is the third and final coat of the paint. And I was happy. I was a little nervous. I was like, well, this looks like it's a little bit lighter than what was on there, but apparently. You have to have clear coat in order to make that look right. So I was, didn't know if I should put like a fourth coat on or not. But 
that was a little bubble and thank god it just went away so spray painting it making sure it all looks good looking at the coverage and that was it for the third and final coat guys now let's get on the clear coat all right just again making sure that it doesn't spray any bubbles I'll put a small coat on here i was a little bit nervous putting this coat on because it was you know the end and I didn't know how many coats I would need. So I didn't want to have dripping or anything like that. So I just put a light coat and let it dry. All right, time to put on the second coat of clear coat. Again, uh, I'm doing like 50% of what I sprayed before, maybe a little bit more. That way it's all nice and even. I am looking out to make sure I'm not getting any drip marks or anything like that. But you can already see where the clear is starting to show up. So we're going to let this dry and then put on another coat after that. All right, I let it dry for 30 minutes. I'm putting on my last coat. Uh, it does come on there real thick, so I didn't think I would need another one after that, which I didn't. So I'm just making sure I'm getting a nice coverage on it. And then I will let that dry for an additional 30 minutes and come back out and clean it up. And you guys will see the ending result. All right, moment of truth. This is where it all comes down. It's like opening up a Christmas present except being nervous about it. Um, I do have to put on a little bit more clear coat once I get all this paper off because of the sanding area that I did. And remember I was telling you about those little hard edges. So I'm glad I did do it and end up being the right thing to do i think but it did did work out so let me speed up this taking off the paper thing all right as i take off this last piece you can see right there the lighter spots between the painted area that's a little bit of the sanding area so i figured what i do is i'm going to spray a little bit more clear coat on there because i can always come back back and buff and do a light sanding afterwards which, which is what I'm going to do. But to tell you the truth, I was extremely pleased with it. But you'll see me put on a little bit. I'm not worried about getting it on the flat parts because again, that's where you'll get the, the buffing and the slight, uh, slight sandpaper. Right now, it just looks more dramatic than it is. But I'll show you once I let all this stuff dry because again, it's not dry. All this is still wet. So let's go down to where it's all dried up. That's the area there that was damaged. And now I'm gonna show you down the side. I mean, this thing worked perfect. The only thing I have left to do is do a little bit of buffing. And I've never waxed the RV, so the, actually the RV is not as shiny as the area, but it will be once I'm done doing all the work I need to do. But now I'll show you how I got them to match. What I did was I took this door off, just unscrewed it, brought it to the paint shop. I'm not talking like a regular paint shop. I'm talking like an auto body paint shop. What they did was they shot this area and that's how they were able to match the paint for us. And I think they did a fantastic job. So I'd say that was a win. We saved a lot of money, a lot of money. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time and see what other kind of trouble I can get in. Have a good day.